Welcome, traders, to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Uh, just let me get rid of uh, audio feeds. And we shall get going. Uh, so before we jump into uh, today's conversation, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, understanding that trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and we uh, could face the possibility of, uh, of losing more capital than we initially have on deposit. Uh, and secondly, and most importantly, that um, any views expressed here today are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held or uh, retained by Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. Um, so just before we get going here, if we could just check that the audio feed's working and that you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, if you just tap a Y in the chat box. Good stuff. <coughs> okay. So before I jump into the charts today, I'll just give you a, a brief overview of, uh, of myself, where I'm coming from. Um, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, uh, left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post-merger uh, late 2004. I then moved on to explore um, my passion for markets really with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started uh, day trading or more appropriately day gambling, uh, the S&P 500. And after some um, early beginner's luck, I racked up some, some quite solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a, uh, a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, which to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is really an understatement. And so it was at this point, I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for um, 18 months to about two years, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a trading strategy that specifically suited my personality, um, extensively back and forward testing that strategy and underpinning it with a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly during this period of mentorship though, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important uh, shift I made was moving away from being a highly goal focused individual orientated by financial gains to becoming a, a purely process orientated individual. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of, of losing trades. Once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, you understand the true nature of trading, which is that you're playing a numbers game, uh, in which you're simply playing the probabilities. And by, by adopting that approach to the markets, uh, you lose or you, you get rid of that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even small strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades. because so I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. The track record you can see on the screen is from 2013 when I started managing investor capital through a managed account service. I've delivered positive annual returns, and I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Also since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education firms, contributing written content, webinars and live presentation content, a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert at Tickmill, providing a daily market analysis and a, a, a daily trade setup that I'm watching in the markets 
Uh, you can subscribe to that through their, the Tickmill blog there and you can receive those updates in your, uh, in your inbox. My other passion project is as head of trading for a leading trading education brand, fxcareerswap.com. We're offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' marketing, uh, market and, and trading knowledge. We work on developing mindsets through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those who are interested, I'll post a link in the chat at the end if you want to uh, take a look into what we're doing at FX Career Swap. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. So let's jump into uh, today's content. I want to just quickly check in with our uh, S&P uh, seasonal, um, seasonal patterns that we are, are watching. Um, as noted in previous sessions, we were looking for the S&P to top out in, uh, in September and ultimately looking for some type of low to be put in towards the back end of October. Um, when we look at the charts in a minute, I'll, uh, I'll update you on where I see the S&P and the potential moves there. A um, couple of off the chart uh, pieces of information I wanted to give you. Um, one with respect to the euro and, um, and certainly the euro options that are currently in the market. Um, shared with the guys on the FX Career Stock trading floor this morning, the current option structure for the euro. You can see um, that we are currently in a, a phase here at 1750 to around 118 that has heavy optionality. And so what does this mean? Well, it means that there'll be a lot of hedging taking place in the market at the moment, whilst we trade between those option levels. Um, and that has the potential to mean that it can be quite heavy going and we can be in, in choppy conditions through this 117, 118. Um, the options roll off uh, tomorrow, um, and then, uh, then we could see maybe a more directional move as we head into, uh, into next week. Um, also note that we have some big barriers up at the 120 level. We had a crack up there uh, earlier, um, earlier in the month, but uh, we got rejected. But for now, the focus really seems to be in terms of this, uh, this 117, 118, uh, 1750, 118 area where we've got that heavy optionality, making it difficult for the markets to make too much uh, ground above that level, uh, certainly today and tomorrow. Um, one other interesting um, piece of information, actually I'll come to that at the end when I cover the chart. So, um, so with, the, with that said, let's move into the charts now. First of all, I wanna check in and just revisit these um, fractal patterns that we've been tracking in terms of uh, a potential roadmap for, for price action as we head into uh, the back end of this year. You can, you'll probably be aware now of the similarities that I've highlighted. This is the dollar index, this is the broad dollar index, so the dollar index versus six other uh, currencies. Um, and you can see, again, the similarities in terms of the, the structure of the price movement, not necessarily the scale or, um, or matching it tick for tick, but what we're looking for here with these fractal patterns is just to give us a general roadmap in terms of what we're uh, what we can expect in terms of price action. And certainly we're tracking pretty well at the moment. And we've got this pullback that we talked about last week. Um, let's just bring in this. Uh, so we broke out here in terms of the, well, we put in a base last September with the, um, sorry, September 2017, apologies. Uh, we put in a base and then we uh, three wave higher into a corrective high and we ultimately rolled over. We've got a similar situation, I think, that's developing here at the moment. You can see we broke out uh, through the descending trend line on the psych indicator, broke out through the descending trend line on the psych indicator. So what we're looking for now in terms of this dollar index is a, uh, a C wave corrective high. And, um, and we can see that we're based, we're based here around this 93.30. If we can hold this area, and admittedly it's been pretty heavy going this week for the dollar, but if we can hold this area, then what we'll be looking for is, a, um, is another leg up into a corrective high, a C wave high. And I think that then that should set the stage for, um, for the next leg lower in terms of this dollar index. And, um, and we could be trading down into certainly into the back end of this year, early next year. And um, as we get closer to the election, I'll update you with some of the election cycle information um, for the dollar index, which, um, which suggests that if Biden gets in and uh, all, um, all the polls at this, at this point, and obviously there's a caveat to the polls, as we saw in 2016, 
where uh, where Hillary was uh, was out in front and, and it looked like it was in the bag and obviously Trump got in. So we, we don't want to uh, get overly uh, overly confident in terms of polling, but it is noteworthy that Biden is at this point uh, significantly ahead from even where Hillary was at the same time in 2016. Now, um, the reason why I reference Biden is that it's widely believed that if Biden does get in, then that should lead to some uh, some dollar weakness. So you can see here that this even this this dollar pattern that we're looking at at the moment, if we get the pop and we match in terms of scope and scale elections. Uh, are at the beginning of November, and this would, uh, if we see Biden get in, then this would pr precede what we would anticipate would be a reaction lower in the dollar. So that's what I'm watching in the dollar. In the euro, similar story here. You can see, I think we, we what we're looking for is a correction to complete here. We've had the first leg down. What we're looking for now is another leg, re ideally to retest this breakout point at this 115. And then if we can get, uh, if we can get in there again into these elections, and uh, we get uh, a Biden victory, then I think we, uh, we can see upside for the Euro um, once we get this correction complete. So that's the Euro sterling. Uh, sterling is a bit more driven obviously by the Brexit noise. And I, I highlighted last week the potential for us to make a, a kind of messy bottom here in terms of, uh, in terms of cable, similar to what we did in 2017. And, um, and we've had this initial reaction low. So I'm looking for some more consolidation on, uh, if you follow my daily work, what I've actually highlighted is the potential for an inverse head and shoulders here. So a revisit of this 127.70 area um, before getting the, uh, the next leg higher in terms of cable. And so, um, so we'll see how that one plays out. We're going to look at the actual execution uh, timeframes and charts in a minute, but I just want to give you this broad overview of where I see things uh, from a blue sky perspective, so to speak. Uh, Dolly Yen still trapped within this descending channel. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, Aussie, interesting, looking for this similar pattern that we found in the back end of 2017. At the moment, we look like we're correcting up into uh, to complete a B wave and we look for a C wave then lower in terms of the Aussie potentially setting up a big inverse head and shoulders here uh, around the 67 level. Last but not least, S&P 500. Uh, had, to have a, had to have a potential rethink here in terms of the S&P. Whilst we hold this 3200 level, then, um, then there is the potential here that we complete a, a five-way pattern into the 127 extension of, the, of this significant decline. Um, but again, we'll take a look at the S&P in a bit more detail right now. So I've marked up a bunch of charts I want to, uh, to run through with you today where I see potential opportunities developing or trades that I'm in, and I'll just uh, I'll give you the, the heads up on those. So dollar index in the channel. This is the broad dollar index, again, six uh, versus six currencies. Um, let's just bring in the trend line here so we can see. So that's the trend line that we traded into and held. But like I say, we're holding support here. And if we can hold support at this 93 level, then I'm looking for a third push higher. And this is a, um, a nice technical pattern. So we have equal legs. Clone this gives us equal legs. And then what we'll be looking for is this last leg higher here. Uh, from the current level and this would take us into um to this prior res uh, support zone here to um to now act as as resistance so that's the area I, i'm watching if we get if we if we can maintain support here at the 93 if we don't then i think in pretty short order we'll be back retesting lows and potentially breaking lower so as i've mentioned to the, the guys in the, on my trading team uh, this has been the key area key battle area all week and um it looks like at this stage we may hold it um, but we'll have to see where uh, where we where, where we close things out this week. So we have a similar picture in the uh, the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the dollar on an equal weighted basis versus the euro, the Aussie, sterling, and the yen. And again, what I'm looking for here now is the potential for this three pushes pattern to uh, to play out and get us back into that. Um, that prior support to now act as resistance. And it's from here where I see the potential for us to, uh, to get that next leg lower, as, uh, as I just referenced in terms of those cycle charts. Um, one of the trades I'm in at the moment is the Swissy on the long side. <laughs> Again, basically keying off that same um, pattern that I talked about. We held symmetry swing support. We've held the um, ascending trend line support. 
the RSI stochastic is back down into the 20 zone and uh, maybe we can turn over here potential for us to go green on the day in terms of the near term volume weighted average price. And uh, if we can do that, then we look to challenge the weekly pivot and ultimately get up into um, into this major ascending trend line resistance here. And, uh, and it's from there that I think we could um, we could certainly then think about breaking lower in terms of uh, in terms of the Swissy. So we get that third test of the, the descending trend line resistance. So that would be the ideal area for us to roll over and, uh, and trade lower in line with that, uh, with that dollar index view. Dollar yen, continue really to trade in this, in this triangle. Um, dollar yen is very responsive to US yields. Now the 30 year uh, US yield is at an inflection point today, testing major um, trend line resistance. If that could break out, and that we could see some support here for the dollar yen. But what we've got here is an equality objective uh, at 106.95. We've got the descending trend line 107. So I think it's still going to be hard work for the dollar yen, uh, most likely until we get a clearer view on where these uh, these US elections are going to uh, are going to shake out. So we probably range trade in terms of the dollar yen uh, using a 107, 105 as the, as the range in terms of dollar yen into the elections. But if we do roll over from this, um, the apex of the, of the triangle here, then, uh, then we look for 104.25 as the support level on the downside. Looney talked uh, last week about the Looney potentially holding this um, 132.41 area. Uh, as, uh, as the potential for another leg higher actually in the loony, we've actually broken the ascending trend line support. So unless the buyers step in um, today and we can, uh, we can get a close back through, the, um, back through the VWAP, get this thing bullish back through 132.90, uh, we could be re retesting um, the 129 or the 130 certainly lows. But the RSI stochastic has reset here and there's the potential that we're gonna make a higher low and that would set up another leg of upside. And again, broadly in line with the idea that we see a, um, another leg lower in, uh, in the Euro and these FX majors and another leg higher in terms of the dollar index. So all eyes on if we can get a close back through uh, 132, where are we? Yeah, 132.90 would, uh, would flip the chart bullish and then set up a move to test uh, 136.44. Euro, so the Euro obviously at its resistance point here and, um, and we've seen a few rejections. Uh, the monthly pivot comes in just be ahead of 118 and we've seen a couple of rejections there but we're holding the weekly pivot. So we're kind of trapped here. And like I said at the, um, at the beginning, the, the optionality in the market at the moment supports that idea that, we, um, that we're probably going to be in, uh, in a range here, certainly through maybe till late tomorrow. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that, uh, shakes out but this is the for me at the moment anyway this is the control um, candle in play and we need to take this the highs out to, uh, to suggest further upside whilst we still have this one any break back through um, Wednesday's low would be uh, would be bearish and you can see RSI stochastic at that uh, 80 level with uh, and potentially starting to turn over so I want to keep an eye on that euro yen trading at trend line resistance and I'm looking for the potential here for us to, to fail and roll back through 124 and get another leg of corrected downside, uh, potentially retesting channel support here down 121.17. Similar story, RSI stochastic, pretty, uh, pretty, oversold, uh, pretty overbought, sorry. And we're back into this potential resistance zone and, uh, and we have completed an equality move as well. An ABC uh, 124.95 holds the resistance currently. Um, Euro CAD. This has been a tricky one. I've traded this uh, a couple of times this week without very much success, I might add. Um, I was looking for the Euro CAD to break higher here, but we've held this uh, this resistance area, and, uh, and we're now back testing support. You can see pretty choppy price action, um, but we'll see. What it looks like we're going to try or attempt again to hold this trend line support, and if we can, still see potential for this to the upside. Um, we'd have to take out really this one, uh, 155.20 on the downside to get, uh, to get really bearish on this. So again, tricky trading environment there in the Euro CAD. Euro Sterling, 
Looking to try and break out here to the upside, we have an equality objective versus this swing low at the 94 area into these prior cycle highs. Got a bullish uh, candle here from the weekly pivot. Didn't get any follow through, closed back below the trend line resistance, uh, but we're looking to have another crack at it today. I'd be, so I'd be interested on the long side if we can get a close um, through this trend line resistance. And like I say, got a nice target up here, a quality objective at 94.45. Let's check in with Sterling, um, the widow maker really this week, Sterling. It's just been driven um, by headlines, obviously, uh, source reports and comments from Barnier and Frost regarding, uh, regarding the Brexit debacle. Um, and like I said before, in, when looking at the fractal, I still think we could get a test here, 127.60, and um, maybe get an inverse head and shoulders and, and take off to the upside. But again, it is going to be, it's kind of asymmetric risk. We're either going to get positive uh, news or negative news, and the market is, is being driven um, predominantly by very short-term momentum algorithms, which is just feeding off these headlines and trying to keep up with them is, uh, is a very difficult task indeed. Um, but like I say, 130 is the resistance and, uh, and 128 is the support at the moment. Sterling yen, similar story. But what I would look for here with Sterling yen is if we get a close, if we can take out, again, thinking in terms of this candle here being the supply candle, if we can get a close or a breach of 135.80, um, then I think we've got a chance to, to roll over here and certainly get a move down into 129.90 even uh, the equality objective versus this swing high, which would have us back down to 128, 127.90. But again, we want to see a closing breach of this, uh, of this weekly pivot. And again, we have a pretty tight range here and we've just been chopping inside that during the week, making it, uh, making it difficult trading. A similar pattern here in the Sterling CAD, but it's slightly wider range. You can see these tails again, just very, uh, very difficult trading environment. Sterling Aussie looking a little bit clearer here in terms of the pattern and the trend line support. So again, thinking in terms of a close or a breach of this uh, 79, 179.60 um, could open up a retest of the lows here, 174.98. But uh, at the moment, we're trading within this ascending trend line. Need to see that taken out to see some long liquidation in the market. Aussie. Um, Held, uh, held support here at the uh, 70, 90 level. Could see a pop higher now in the Aussie um, up into this equality move and the descending trend line resistance before the potential for another leg to the downside in the Aussie. Um, obviously the Aussie feeds off uh, risk sentiment in terms of the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. We'll take a look at those shortly, but I would definitely be paying attention to any move into this 72, late 72 area, watching for bearish reversal patterns uh, to do something on the, on the short side there. Aussie yen, similar story here, quite clean pattern setting up into the 78.6% retracement of this leg down, nice overlapping uh, corrective pattern developing here and also the potential for a head and shoulders scenario to develop. So any move up into this 77 area, I will be paying attention to watching for bearish reversal patterns to, uh, to look at doing something on the short side in the Aussie yen, Aussie kiwi. Uh, this is a, a trade I put on last night, uh, shared this uh, via the Tickmill blog. You can see the similarities really in terms of the price structure here. We had, uh, we had this leg down, we had correction, creating a trend line resistance. And then we had that final leg, broke the trend line, consolidated and took off. Went up, to, created a uh, second point in terms of a trend line to the top side. And we basically repeated the pattern here on, um, on the downside and that three wave corrected move, which, um, which took us down into the trend line support area, consolidated. Now we're potentially gonna break out here in terms of this Aussie Kiwi. And so I've got this on long, it's, I've, I've now got it risk-free. And let's see if we, can, uh, if we can get some momentum here, certainly look for a move up to test uh, the projected ascending trend line resistance, which now sits up uh, towards the uh, 111.50 handle. So we'll see if we can get the follow through and um, 
and take this one up into the top side of the uh, trend channel. Kiwi um, came down into, uh, well, a Kiwi is an interesting story actually, because this is, a, this is one of those scenarios where it, it just crucifies fundamental traders. And, um, and can be frustrating for technical traders as well. But overnight, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, there were comments out, uh, very dovish comments, talking about the implementation of negative rates. And overnight, we saw this spike lower in the Kiwi, um, again, uh, attributed really to, to algorithms just trading off those news headlines. But lo and behold, the Kiwi now is, uh, is, is higher on the day. And if you were trading purely from a fundamental basis, you would think that would be negative for the Kiwi, but market in one of those typical uh, sell the rumor, buy the fact setups has, uh, has goosed everyone and has reversed on the day. And if we hold this current support and we get through the VWAP and the weekly pivot at just above the 66 handle, then I think we get, uh, we get this, this move into the you know, quality objective and sets up then an interesting scenario whereby we could have head and shoulders set up here and we'd have some nice divergence in terms of coming up into this trend line resistance in terms of our psych indicator. It's paying, would pay a lot of attention to how price responds at that 67 handle because we could see, uh, we could see a pullback from there and maybe see a more sustained uh, probe lower through to test the 6380 area in the Kiwi. I, I'm actually, um, and I got triggered into this myself. I'm in the trades. Um, I'm using the, uh, I'll be using my VWAP as, uh, as a stop on this one. Uh, Kiwi Yen. Kiwi Yen has traded into this um, projected trend line resistance. We've got that great reversal candle on, um, on Wednesday. And again, I had an order for this one. Um, haven't been triggered into it yet, but I'm gonna leave the order in here and see maybe we can't uh, maybe we can't break higher in terms of kiwi yen a few of the yen pairs look a little wobbly today um so if we can get back down through this the overnight lows here 69.40 i still think we've got potential with this kiwi yen to see the trend channel down at 68 tested uh before we might uh, see some recovery so i'm watching this one still um but if we do if again similar to the uh the kiwi itself if we do hold this as the swing low then where are we going? Well, we should be back up at 71.10. By that stage, I think we should be at this resistance here and we likely uh, see some, some pressure emerge from there, which, uh, which could set up for this move back down into the base here at the 68 area. So a couple of options there for the Kiwi Yen. Kiwi Swiss, I'm in this on the long side, which is kind of acting as a bit of a hedge for my... Uh, my Kiwi dollar position at the moment. Um, look, at, as we hold this trendline support, then the potential is that we certainly retest this 61.14 and, um, and potentially higher into what could be a double top here towards 63. Obviously, I've, I've got the Swissy trade on as well. So they're, they're working kind of in use, uh, unison at this point. Um, and like I say, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of semi hedge to my uh, Kiwi position. I see, We'll have to see where we close on the day with the Kiwi. I mean, if we can't get back through the, the VWAP and the weekly pivot, then there's still the potential here. I think we, we roll over. And certainly when we look at the S&P in a minute, you'll see that uh, risk assets are, uh, are finely poised at the moment. Um, Kiwi CAD holding the ascending trend line support here. Quite a bit of dispersion from, uh, from the VWAPs. And so uh, I still think we could, uh, we could potentially take this out and, uh, and trade lower. But for now, we're holding the support area and we'll have to see where we, uh, where we close on the day. But we are trading um, below the 100 VWAP and well below the, uh, the five period, which is, uh, which is pretty bearish, to be honest with you. We've also got the um, psych indicator bearish, negative divergence here. So, I mean, the, the pressure in terms of momentum in the market is on the downside. We'll have to see if we're going to uh, hold the trend line. CAD Swiss, uh, watching this one, can we get the close through the trend line? Looks like we might here. And if we can, I think this has got scope to the upside. I've posted this today as a, uh, as a chart of the day on the Tickmill blog. I think we can easily see a move up to test this uh, 71.13. But again, we need to see where we close. Uh, and ideally, we'd like to flip this uh, monthly VWAP bullish as well. 
Swiss yen. Uh, this is this one I've got on the short side at the moment. A uh, bunch of topping, potentially topping tails here as we head into the 50% retracement, uh, just ahead of the top side of the channel. Plenty of congestion here in terms of prior lows and uh, opportunity for some supply, which we started to see. If we if we can hold this area and uh, and start to roll over, then I think in terms of downside, we'd be looking at uh, the equality objective. But initially looking at that 127 extension, if you hold the 50%, that's a, once you get through the prior lows, that's a natural objective. And it would take us back into these lows at 112. So uh, sitting short the Swiss yen at the moment. So NASDAQ trading into its potential uh, projected trend line resistance here. So we'll see how this responds today. If we break out, then all bets are off. And I think we, we retest and potentially make new highs. Similar story in the S&P here. Um, what we what we potentially got is let me get rid of that. We traded right back into um, this resistance area here. So we'll see if we hold that zone. Then um, then again, similar story really with the S and P. I'd anticipate we retest and potentially break highs. And if we just go back to the cycle, um, this is the target. This thirty seven twenty seven. And if uh, certainly if we get up there, then um, that'll be, to my mind anyway, nosebleed territory. And uh, we should see a decent pullback from there as we head into these uh, these elections. So we'll see how that, uh, that S&P shakes out. Gold going nowhere fast, still in this descending trend line and, um, and trapped by this, uh, this congestion zone here. If we hold this resistance, then I look for gold to test the uh, symmetry swing and a quality objective at this uh, 18, 20, 1800 level. Uh, crude oil, looking for 42 to cap it now and then see another leg of uh, corrected downside on crude. Seasonality for crude isn't great at the moment. Um, we're seeing the pop higher based on, um, based on the move that we're seeing in risk assets at the moment. But like I say, if we start to struggle in terms of these equities, then I think uh, we see some weakness in gold. And last but not least this week, um, this isn't one that I normally talk about very much, but I'm going to reference it today. Uh, Bitcoin. This is a Bitcoin um, volatility chart. And what's noteworthy is that every time volatility has got down to this 20 level, admittedly we got to uh, 13 in, in uh, 2016, but prior occasions where we've seen this test um, six out of seven times where we've tested the 20% volatility, um, Bitcoin has exploded higher. There is one time, obviously, in November um, 2018, where the move was lower. This is volatility. This isn't price direction. This is a measure of the volatility in the market. Um, but it's interesting to note, we're getting pretty close to this 20. And the last chart we're going to look at this week is Bitcoin. And um, you can see we're in this channel. And uh, if we test the channel support here, uh, coming into the next uh, couple of days, and we get that volatility testing the 20% level, and we see a reversal from this uh, trendline support, I think there's, uh, you know, there's a bullish setup there in Bitcoin potentially using volatility, using the price action, and we could get back up and maybe retest, uh, retest through back into the ascending uh, trend, projected trendline resistance up to maybe 13,000 there. So that's one to keep your eye on, one for the weekend. Um, but again, also, if we take out this ascending trend line, um, trend line support, then the next big move could actually be to the downside in Bitcoin. And, um, and certainly you'd, uh, you'd be thinking about, uh, about a retest here of 8,450 on the downside, initially at least. But with six out of seven volatility events suggesting higher prices, the balance of probabilities are that we maybe test this trend line support. Maybe we run through it, get all the shorts excited, and then snap back and get a bullish reversal. But certainly watch this area because uh, if we hold this 10,000, 10,200, I think we could get a look at uh, 13,000. Okay, that's, uh, that's everything I'm watching at the moment. Um, are there any questions? Anyone want me to take a look at a chart? That I didn't cover, you can type it in the chat box or I can unmute your mic and you can speak to me live by the wonders of Zoom. If there aren't any questions, an N in the chat box is equally helpful so I know we're all on the same page and I can wrap this session up here.
Okay, good stuff. I will uh, close this one out. I hope it's been helpful and we'll uh, reconvene sometime next week. Thanks very much for your time.